and welcome. My name is Ranger Tessa and I'm a park ranger with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, formerly a park ranger at Mount St. Helens with the U.S. Forest Service. Forty years ago today, Mount St. Helens erupted and caused the deadliest and most economically destructive volcanic event in U.S. history. Today, I'd like to talk about the unprecedented events that led to a partnership between the U.S. Forest Service and the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to create an unprecedented solution and how when multiple agencies work together, we can literally move mountains. Mount St. Helens, leading up to May 18th, suffered over 10,000 earthquakes and grew a noticeable bulge on the north flank of the volcano. At 8.32 a.m. on May 18, 1980, the summit of Mount St. Helens and new growth slid away in the largest landslide in recorded history. The landslide essentially uncapped the volcano, unleashing explosive volcanic gases, resulting in a lateral blast. The lateral blast that followed exited the mountain at rates of up to 300 miles an hour, reaching temperatures of 600 degrees Fahrenheit. The lateral blast was powerful enough to annihilate old growth forests, searing vegetation and leaving a standing dead zone around the volcano. Both the landslide and lateral blast were unprecedented events, but Mount St. Helens wasn't done yet. Then the mountain unleashed an ash column almost 14 miles high for the next nine hours. The wind blew the ash east across Washington state and eventually across the entire country. The pumice ash was thick enough to turn day into night. In a matter of minutes, Mount St. Helens took 57 lives and demolished 230 square miles, roughly the size of the city of Chicago. The heat of the volcanic activity was powerful enough to melt the mountaintop glaciers and send 3.7 billion cubic yards of material down the Toodle River, the Cowlitz River, and eventually the Columbia River. Lahars, or destructive mudflows comprised of volcanic material, flowed down these river valleys and caused flooding concerns for residents of Toodle, Castle Rock, Kelso, Lexington, and Longview, Washington. Lahars destroyed 27 bridges and nearly 200 homes. The sheer volume of debris was enough to swallow the Seattle Space Needle whole and eventually halted traffic on the Cowlitz and Columbia Rivers for about a week. With the Columbia River Navigation Channel halting traffic, and many homes facing devastating flood risks, federal, state, and local agencies established a communication system to coordinate the recovery efforts. As the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers' main missions include water navigation and flood risk reduction, on May 19th, just one day after the eruption, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers got involved to restore navigation on the Columbia River and reduce further flood damages. It would take an unprecedented solution to solve these unprecedented events. Stay tuned for our next video to learn more about the multi-agency effort to move this mountain.